this to come up. I started talking to the guard, she's not going. She's a guard, she's not going. She's my guard, pinky. This is so crazy. And she's going to be really happy. She's cool.
in a very restricted family. And his father kept his name of Bhai Charanar Vinda Das. Who is a Bhai Charanar Vinda? Krishna is himself Char Bhakti. Abhay Charanar Vinda. Those who will take center in the Lord's feet of God, Krishna Chandra, oh, they will be Abhay forever. Fearless forever. So he knelt and when he became some more agent, then he brought Mritanga for him. And he used to play not all for other things, but only Mridanga. So from childhood, he has some inspiration to do bhajan. He was a very great learned day scholar. So, Bengal Comical kept him as manager and all <coughs> management he was doing. After some time, he thought that I should make my own factory in chemical. And he did. But he had not come to as a medicine maker or anything, worldly thing. So what man proposes, God disposes. And also, he used to tell me when I, I requested him from sanya, for sanya, in this Mathura, he told me that when I was initiated in 23 or 4, when, no, no, don't remember, in huh? 22, yes, who are you? Then, he began to read Sri Bhattu Bhagavatam and he saw a line Jata Jasyam Anugran Aman Parishetam Dhanam Sane To whom I do mercy I take all his worldly what? Huh? Position and everything. I make them a street beggar. So he told me that uh, I was chanting name, reading Thakwat, doing everything, writing some essays in back to harmony. Back to or punish that at the time of those. So he used to tell me, uh, Prabhupada told him that uh, your English is very perfect. You can preach in Western countries at that time. And he showered his mercy on him. When I told him that you should take some nash here, now you are a state bigger. Then he began to tell his story. After Bengal chemical, I started my own business, but I fell. Then I came to Allahabad, and there I started a very big medicine shop. And Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, and his daughter Indira Gandhi, they used to 
come to his shop or shopping. But after some time it also failed. Then he began to do his own agency, some medicine he made and began to distribute himself. But he also felt then he came to Mathura to sell his medicines. And by chance I met him in uh, Bengali court. What are you doing? You should come to my court. And brought him and keep a room here. And I used to be here by side. And then he, he was here. Then I told that uh, now no need of fear. You are now a straight bigger. Nothing you have. So you should take Sannyas Prabhupada one. And in the meantime I do the same. And I requested by Gurudev Ji. He is your bosom friend from boyhood. You should tell him that he should take Sannyas. And then, that was a old person of 94, he told, his name was Muni huh? Maharaj after, before Sanatan Dasadikar. He told that if he will take Sanas, I will also take and he inspired him and thus both became ready and here fire sacrifice and everything was done and I made danda, uh, door, cobin, everything and I taught him how to use these things and then sannash was given to him. After that, then here he went to Agra for fishing and then he went to one town, Jhansi. And he wanted to establish their duties and to make a fishing center. He called my Gurudev and we about twenty Brahmachari Sannasis went there. And we wanted to establish this Mahaprabhu. But by chance, it was not done. Then he returned and gave that duty to Gurudev, and Gurudev established here. This is the shine of Swami Maharaj. And after that, he went to Western, Western country. He has no farming penny, no paisa, no rupee. And then he requested navigation of India, Cynthia. And he, in water was Jahaj. And he, in so many days he reached there. Perhaps one month or more than that. And in the way, he became very, very sick. And then he wrote a poem to Krishna or Prabhupada. I don't know. Krishna. And he prayed and after that he became. Then he went to New Jersey. And in a park, he was thinking how to preach and then with Kartal he used to see on that park on, uh, under a tree and closing eyes Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advait Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Ram Hare Ram he was, his voice was so attractive that in that park 
Hippie used to come in a large number and on his tune they used to dance there and after that they used to give him alcohol or anything to him. They never knew that he dared touch them. And after some time hearing his classes and song, oh, all the hippies who used to come there, they became disciples. One of the hippie disciples is Shamrani and also Vindavan Vilasini also. Very young, very beautiful at that time. And they began to spread the mission of Srila Bhakti, Vedan Swami Maharaj. In a couple of years, oh, so many months, the preaching center was established. And he translated so many authorized books, Chaitanya Chaitam, Mitsimad Bhagavatam, and all other books. And it was distributed in the whole world. And then he picked his disciples also, Tamal Krishna and so many Brahm, Brahmanas and so many came. Vindavan also. Yeah. America? Giriraj and so many came. After that, he established his precious center in the midst of ocean, on the top of hills, everywhere, and then in England, America, Africa, Australia, all other countries. And his books were distributed to the whole world. Thus a revelation of religion came. So, Today, his birthday, I pray him to show, suffer his mercy to me and to all his disciples that we should also boldly preach the mission of Sri Guru Gauranga and Rupa Goswami over the whole world. And following him, I went to Western countries to see where he had preached how and what is the influence. If ever I went, I saw his influence. Oh, lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of disciples here, ladies and and they were doing book distribution and other things. I also pray his mercy that I should like him preach and write books. I by their much my Gurudev and I have also written more than hundred books and it is translated in the mind all languages of the whole world. And like him my books are distributed here and there. Today I am offering Pushpanjali the Lotus Street. After that Shamrani and Prajandananda Prabhu, all we will speak, but I will have to go just now a place. I have given word. I don't, I did not remember that I will be here. But anyhow, I am going and coming to you to give the class.
Acharya, whoever makes his words and his heart one with the words and heart of his previous Acharya, he's automatically the next Acharya. In that regard, Srila Gurudev has said, he is Bhaktivedanta, I am Bhaktivedanta. Like father, like son. I am his only successor. Let this be declared boldly. No one in the world could love him as I love him. Srila Prabhupada defined his iskan by the following verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita from the discussion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Sri Rai Ramananda. Krishna Bhakti Bhavitamati Kriyatam Yadi Kutam Ilabhyate Tachumolya Api Mulya Mekalam Janmakoti Sukhutar Nalabhyate Krishna consciousness cannot be purchased pure, spontaneous uh, feelings to Krishna like the Vrajbhasis cannot be obtained either by millions of births of pious activities or millions of births of spiritual pious activities like Vaidhi Bhakti, rules and regulations. It can be obtained only by one price and that is the greed to have it. Hearing from the pure devotee about the beautiful pastimes of the Lord and seeing the beautiful deity of the Lord, understanding who he actually is, as Prajendra Nandan Sham Sundar. Only by that one can attain Raj Bhakti, which is the purpose of my making the Yiskan movement. Srila Prabhupada Srila Gurudev revealed that. He was the one who revealed that to us. He himself said that Srila Prabhupada is not a follower of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu comes in every age to give the Yuga Dharma. But Srila Prabhupada, he said, being Gauravani Prasharane, came to give the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prema Ras Nir Yas Kori Te Aswadan Raghamarga Bhakti Loke Kori Che Pachane that is, he came to taste the love of Srimati Radhika and he came to distribute the path of Raganuga Bhakti. It was Srila Gurudev who told us that this was Srila Prabhupada's ambition and for that end only, Srila Prabhupada published so many books, established so many temples, so many deities, so many gurukulas, preaching centers, so regarding his books, Srila Prabhupada said that my books are just like time bombs. Real preaching means to drop millions of bombs or millions of books in the laps of all the conditioned souls. And time bomb doesn't only mean that you give a book to somebody, but then who's ever destined to read it, the book will explode at that time. But it also means that if somebody's reading the book, because the time bomb has gone off for him, so many years later, when he meets the pure devotee, another pure devotee, that time bomb goes off again, and he sees more and more deep truths. Srila Gurudev said so many times, I am giving you the shovel to go deeply into Srila Prabhupada's books. Srila Prabhupada's books are just like a treasure chest. And millions of people have tasted the jewels of that treasure chest. But there's another treasure chest inside of that, which is locked, which contains so many even greater jewels. So the key to that treasure chest of Srila Prabhupada's books is in the hand of the Maha Bhagwat. So Srila Gurudev is saying that by my mercy, 
Although everything's in Srila Prabhupada's books, by the mercy of the Mahabhagwa, you can see what's in there. I'm giving you a spotlight to turn on to Srila Prabhupada's books. He told me in 1993, I met him in 1992, in 1993, Gurudev told me that Srila Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our Srila Prabhupada came ultimately to give the fortune of living entities Manjuri Bhav. And I said, where does it say that? Because I never knew that Prabhupada came to give that. Although I, at that time I had been his disciple for 26 years. So I immediately uh, uttered the sloka very quickly. Then, after my meeting with Gurudev, I went back to my room at Krishna Balaram Mandir and I went through my folio of Srila Prabhupada's books and sure enough, at least 30 times Prabhupada mentioned that verse and explained that this is the goal of his mission. In 1974 or so, many devotees, although Srila Prabhupada was uh, beginning to manifest his Chaitanya Charitamrita, and he had produced several volumes. But many of the uh, devotees were thinking that the Chaitanya Charitamrita was only meant for big, big scholars or very, very advanced devotees. And we should just distribute Prabhupada's introductory books like Bhagavad Gita. So I wrote to Srila Prabhupada and he wrote back that no, all of my books are for all classes of men. They should be distributed to everyone. So we began distributing Chaitanya Charitamrita, even Anjalila, throughout all the airports in America. And when we asked Srila Gurudev the same thing, because there was a big controversy that only Srila Gurudev's very introductory books should be distributed to the masses, and he, his books should be kept only for his senior devotees those who've been cultivating Krishna consciousness for 10, 20 years. So for so many years, Gurudev said no. And then at one specific time, when he was at the airport in Fiji, he was just about to uh, enter the gate and he was surrounded by about 200 devotees. And we told him that many devotees won't distribute your, all of your books. They only want to distribute the introductory ones. Because they say that it might as well be, somebody might as well be reading Chinese because there are so many Sanskrit terms in your books. So Gurudev said, no, all for all, all books for all. And then Madhav Maharaj repeated, all for all. And then I said, but they can't understand it. Gurudev said, it doesn't matter. If they simply take the book, then our mission is accomplished because they'll get Sukritis just by having the book. And who's ever meant to get the book, that person will get it and develop Sukritis just by looking at the book. Just as Srila Prabhupada used to write, that if anybody has the book in their house, he has Lord Narayan in their house to purify their house. So the Gurudev, when we asked him in 1996, this was the all for all was just a couple of years ago. But in 1996, we were trying to play the devil's advocate. And we told him, Gurudev, but what about vain of heat? The people are taking LSD, meat eating, drinking wine. Gurudev said, no matter. There's no lust in this book. They'll put the book in their Elmira, and who's ever meant to read it from his past to previous, he will read it. So Guru is one, even in this aspect. Srila Prabhupada encouraged his householders that book distribution is the best business for householders. They can keep the profit and maintain themselves. And I've been with Srila Gurudev in so many cities around the world in airports, in homes, in some preaching centers, and Gurudev would always say the same thing. Distribute books everywhere, especially the young ladies. 
and you can keep the boat, the profits, for going here and there. Not here and there to the movies, but going here and there to India, to my festivals. Shila Prabhupada said millions of bombs should be um, dropped on the laps of conditioned souls. And Gurudev said at the airport, you should distribute my books from the airplanes, from the tops of buildings, just as he said now, and as he says every year or several times a year, that Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness. He said, I went to see his influence, and I saw that in the forest, on the tops of mountains, in the midst of oceans, everywhere in the forest, he's distributing Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada said that if somebody reads simply one slope of my books, their whole life can become successful. And in Hawaii, Srila Gurudev said, I'm giving lectures here and there, but what's happening? They're evaporating into the air. Especially, he said, if you hear my lecture, and then after the lecture, you start speaking about some prajalpa, then the books, what I, the knowledge that I give is evaporated. If you repeat over and over again what you've heard, then it will have some solid foundation. But he said, basically, the lectures, they'll evaporate, we'll forget them. But the books, there's something solid. And that's why I'm giving class, this is Gurudev speaking, that's why I'm giving less classes and spending more time in writing my books. And Srila Prabhupada said about his own books, that these books will create, in fact, he wrote in his purport. In fact, it's in the very verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, and the description by Sri Narada Muni to Srila Vyaste, that these books create a revolution in the dust-worn hearts of the misdirected civilization. Srila Prabhupada said, you should learn the art of distributing books without irritating anyone. And Srila Gurudev said, Trinata pi sunichena. When you're preaching, don't try to subtly manipulate anyone or control them. But be Trinata pi sunichena. Give all your love to Krishna and all your love to all people. And give all your service to them. Just like a doctor, both Prabhupada and Gurudev said, just like a doctor, when a patient is delirious and crazy and cursing and kicking the doctor, the doctor doesn't take personal offense, but he continues very lovingly treating the patient. Srila Gurudev said, even if somebody urinates on you or passes stool on your head, still you should be happy and help them in Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada said that my books are the authorized versions of liberated souls. They're not my books. They're just presented by my humble self. So on their strength, the power will be there to educate people all over the world so they could stop their degrading path to hell. And similarly, at the beginning of all Srila Gurudev's books, he says the same thing. I'm just like a dry straw, but because I've performed service to my Gurudev, he's giving me the power to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And he's giving power to my books. Srila Gurudev told us in Los Angeles that, well, Shil, first Srila Prabhupada said, these are not books, these are Krishna in book form when he was encouraging the devotees to publish and distribute the Krishna book. This is not a book, but it's Krishna in the form of a book, just like Krishna has so many incarnations. Similarly, Gurudev said in about 2002 in Los Angeles that now we have just spent one floor, $200,000, to, to print five books. And all these books are standing in line and they're all calling out, publish me first, 
No, publish me first. No, publish me first. Also confirming that the books are Krishna Swarup, Radha Swarup, Rupa Goswami Swarup. He said, now I'm publishing so many books, I don't want them to remain in cold storage. But I want them that as soon as they're printed, they should all be distributed and then reprinted in cyclic order. Srila Prabhupada used to write letters to us that because you're not distributing my books, I'm not encouraged to write. But of course, as Srila Gurudev said, so many beautiful teenagers like Vrindavan Velasani and thousands of others gave up their uh, youthful energy <coughs> to preach and distribute Srila Prabhupada's books in airports, seaports, supermarkets, and everywhere Gurudev goes, in all of his festivals, he mentions this very same thing. And he says, I want my book distribution to go on in the same quantity, just like Srila Prabhupada's days. He said, but my disciples, they are not so qualified. They are not doing like his disciples are doing or have done. In every uh, festival of Srila Gurudev's, there's always a book table. And for the last few years, in every festival, Srila Gurudev has been saying, he makes two announcements at each festival. I want my table, my book table and poster table to be completely empty. And then the next day he would make the same uh, announcement and he'd say, it's not yet empty. It was so empty, so much more empty after his first announcement. But then he made the second announcement. They're not empty yet. I want every book to disappear from the book table. Not only for yourself, but take 10, take 20 of each book and distribute it to your friends, family members, and everyone you, read, you meet. And if you don't do this, if my book table is not empty, then I will think you are not pure devotees. Srila Prabhupada, last thing, Srila Prabhupada gave us so many marathons to publish his books and to distribute his books. He gave us a two-month marathon to publish all of his Chaitanya Charitamritas, 17 volumes and the first and the two volumes of the fifth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. When the managers of his book department said, Prabhupada, this is impossible. Prabhupada said, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. So similarly, just like you see box reliefs all over this temple, so in Govardhan, Gurudev ordered us to make 35 box reliefs in one month to his uh, artists. And um, in the middle of that marathon, he said, I want to be able to see those box reliefs when I come for the Govardhan festival during Karti. So during the middle of it, we showed uh, Gurudev some of the, in the computer, some of the half-finished bus reliefs. And we said, Gurudev, if you had only given us the order earlier, not just a month before you wanted them, then we would have had a lot more time to get them done better and faster. I said, but then again, our Srila Prabhupada used to do the same thing to us. So Gurudev said, yes, he is Bhakti Vedanta, and I am Bhakti Vedanta. I am no less than him. <laughs> and demanding so much from the disciples. So in this way, Srila Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada are one in all ways and even in this way. Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Hari. For speaking, I offer my Thunderbird Pranamas lots and lots of times. But you notice here by Dikshi Guru. Which is the Vishnu Om Vishnu Pras, the Terrace of Dikshi Shima, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Jong Pras. And at the lotus feet of my Shikshitri, 
I just want to say, by way of introduction, that I'm very glad that we have disciples here like Shamarani Didi and Nidabhi Vilasi Didi because I feel very uh, happy that there are two personalities like this who can properly represent my burden. And both of them have helped me so much in my journey in trying to um, travel along the path of bhakti. The first class I ever heard as a devotee was from Shamaran Gita. So anyway, I want to offer them my Dandavat Pranams. I offer my Dandavat Pranams also to our Rupa Nuru Guru Varga, and to all the wonderful devotees who are assembled here to hear some glorification from our Shamaran Shamarani Didi mentioned, um, and we've all heard many times, that when Prabhupada was departing this world for his Nityarila, he tearfully reached out for a Shilagurida and put his hand in his, concerned deeply for the well-being of his fledgling disciples. He said, I brought so many monkeys. I couldn't quite train them fully, so you please help them become the sugar bottles. <laughs> Even on another occasion, Father once, in dealing with his Western disciples, he said, it is just like washing the coal 